start off, I'm April, I'll be giving a presentation um, real quick so you know whether or not this is for you. You know how you use hashtags in Twitter, you know, too much for this presentation. Um, if you know when to use a, a fan page versus a group in Facebook, you probably know too much for this presentation. Um, however, if you don't know, um, you know, the user profiles for Facebook and Twitter, uh, some demographics, meaning, uh, you know, who's younger, the Facebook user or the Twitter user, who has more money, who's better educated, things like that. If you're really trying to hone in um, on marketing using these two tools and you want to know what the differences are from a demographic standpoint, you might want to stay. So, <laughs> now, does anyone have a small business or they're uh, they're online? Okay. And you have websites. Okay. Um, can I take a like just ask what your business? What is what are you selling or promoting? Or I have a real estate business and eBay business. Okay. How about you? stand and do this. So apologize if my back's to you some time. Okay, just a little bit about me. Um, I have an MBA in marketing. That's why I think all this demographic stuff and the psychology behind these things are pretty interesting. Um, began SEO work in 2000 when AltaVista was the search engine. Uh, so I'm kind of like a relic. Uh, I don't like those. Huh? I don't like those. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I've worked with nonprofits, healthcare, um, education, industry, and real estate. Uh, so my my experience is vast, um, but you know it's hard to consider yourself an expert in a field like this when everything changes daily. Um, I've just been around for a lot of years, uh, and prior to this, I worked in the film industry on uh, the Hollywood movies and commercials. So I have a little bit of like a YouTube slant too, but um, that won't show up in this presentation. Okay, so what you'll learn today, uh, we're going to define social media marketing. Uh, we're going to focus on Twitter and Facebook. And we're going to look at the demographics of both of those. We're going to go a little bit into how to set up a profile for maximum impact. And look at two case studies, a small one uh, for Naked Pizza, and then a rather large one for the brand Coca-Cola. So this I took directly from Wikipedia, and this is the definition that I think works the best. Uh, anyone can counter if they want. It's a form, a social media marketing is a form of internet marketing which seeks to achieve branding, and marketing communication goals through the participation in various social media networks and applications. Fair enough, right? <laughs> so when we get into the pieces of the social media puzzles, uh, there's a lot going on. And uh, you know, you have the technologies from RSS feeds, you have the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, uh, video, YouTube is the most popular there. Social media for pictures, with Flickr, audio, audio, uh, blogs, blogger, wikis, Wikipedia, and then you have some collaboration tools, uh, an example being Google Docs. 
Uh, so for the purpose of this uh, presentation, I'm going to focus on the networks with Facebook and Twitter. Okay. So if we're going to look at the market share um, in the United States for the top five social media marketing sites, we find that Facebook is number one uh, with a year-over-year -year growth of almost 200%. Um, when we look at that a little further in, there's about 300 million active users on Facebook right now. So you're taking a percentage of that number. Um, and we go down and look at Twitter. Now that their growth is over a thousand percent, and right now this year they're projected to have like 18 million users. Um, so we'll look at that in more detail, but just to give you a, a perspective on why they're significant. They keep growing at astronomical rates, and there's no there's no sign that they're going to stop anytime soon. Can I ask a question? Sure. How many people are actually on Twitter? Is everyone using it? Is anyone not using it? It's okay. <laughs> Just curious. Okay, how about Facebook? <coughs> okay, a little less hands on Facebook. I have a question. Sure. Um, when I'm talking with a number of business owners, a lot of them go to the LinkedIn for business referral, but I don't see any of that in a social media circle. Is that because it's more business? Center or I define LinkedIn as um, a social media networking site for business, so it's more of a, a niche, if you will. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, that would actually fall into the, into this realm. Okay. Are these the first five with no gaps? I'm sorry. LinkedIn is below my yearbook in terms of rank. Um, according to this data. Where's this data from? Alexa. So is this page views or? Uh, it's uh, yeah, a combination of page views and traffic to the site. Yeah. All right, so some key stats on Twitter created in 2006 by that gentleman there, Jack Dorsey. Um, like I said, we'll have 18 million active users by the end of this year. The average, average Twitter user has 126 followers. 20% uh, of the traffic comes via the website. Um, but however, 80% comes from third party software installed on cell phones and um, on computers such as like TweetDeck, there's integration with Facebook, so things like that. And currently it's the 13th most popular site on the internet, worldwide. <coughs> and it skews female, about 53% of the current users being female. The audience is younger, with almost half of the users being between 18 and 34. Um, no toddlers yet, from you know, ages 3 to 11, no, no not grade schoolers to speak of. So. Are they seeing the same thing that Facebook saw though? Like Facebook also the biggest problem segment is the older segment. Yes, but this, this is the younger, this is the younger segment. But are they seeing the same thing on Twitter though? Are all, are all the people starting to engage in Twitter? Or? It's still more of a younger, younger person's tool. When I say younger, I mean, the, the demographic between 18 and 34. With Facebook, it's the over 34 crowd. Um, so, and then uh, the second highest is 35 to 49 each group. And they are an educated group of people. 40, oh, you know, 63% of them have a college degree or higher. Um, However, they're less affluent. Um, you know, half of them are making sixty thousand or less, um, and I think that could be attributed to the younger age of the user. You know, they're just starting out in their careers, even though they have a, a graduate degree. They're still um, they're still young. So here's where you go to set up a Twitter account. But we already know that, the majority of us here, right? Does anyone need to see how we do this? OK, great. OK. So here's some tips on how to follow, what you can do. When I find people that are interested in your product or your service, you can do this by using 
Twitter search feature, or you could use a Twitter directory called Twello. Uh, is anyone listed on that directory? Okay, it's pretty. It's a pretty nice directory. It's everything segmented by category. You can also find um, how I start following all the people in Pittsburgh is um, going to I think Twello and just searching category Pittsburgh and then finding people that had Pittsburgh in their profile. Mm -hmm. And if you create like a profile for yourself, you can be found that way through keywords. Yeah, yeah. So you follow them and then you hope they follow you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually it's your simple call, seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit too. So you want to follow some thought leaders and bloggers, people that um, you know you respect and value and want to hear what they're saying. Um, and you can also collect people's Twitter names at events such as this. Uh, that's another popular way to get followers. And then the don'ts of you know following is pretty obvious. Don't follow too many people at once. So don't do a big search on everyone from Pittsburgh and decide you're going to follow all, I don't know, 300,000 over here. Because, um, you know, it looks funny on Twitter and you're going to suspend your account for, you know, suspicious activity, I believe, or terms. Also, if you want somebody to follow you back, I think, like, sometimes if I go to follow somebody, um, or if I see somebody's followed me and then I look at their profile, and they're only following 10 people or, or they have, like, or, no, sorry, if they're following like a thousand people and they only have 10 followers, I might think that they're like spam or something. Right, exactly. Yeah, you want, you want your follower to follow ratio to kind of, you know, not be astronomically out of whack. So don't follow 10,000 people and only have 10 people following you because, uh, like Jamie said, it looks suspicious. Um, but on the flip side of that, don't remove people that you have recently followed just because they haven't followed you back, um, you know, within a day or so. Because you know people are busy, they might not have a chance to look at your profile. Um, so just give them a chance to, uh, you know, check your. your <coughs> and to get followers, you know, you want to make some tweets that are useful resources so people need you. You know, it's fine that if you just have a private account with your friends and family. You know, you just got your haircut today. That's that's good. But if you're using this for a business standpoint. Um, you know, people following you that need your service or product might not want to know that. Is there any tool that lets you monitor multiple of your Twitter accounts at once? Mm -hmm. What's the tool? Um, TweetDeck. Tweet mm -hmm. um, and interact with people you follow who don't follow you back yet. And that's just what I said. <clears throat> Give people a chance. And if they're, they're writing stuff that are still interesting to you, you know, interact with them, make comments about what they've written. And here's a case study that was interesting. It's called Naked Pizza. It's a pretty popular one regarding Twitter. Um, what they did was they wanted to make pizza in the yeah, New Orleans area that's healthy for America, so it's not anything processed. Um, they started using Twitter, you know, a few months back in March. March of this year? Yeah, 2009. They had three goals in mind. They wanted to uh, create a community around healthy eating. Uh, they wanted to save money on marketing because, um, you know, if you're a marketer in the pizza industry, you know you spend a ton of money on direct mail uh, from the flyers and the, the, you know, newspapers to the flyers on the doors, on the cars, um, so it can get very expensive. And they wanted to use it to drive sales as well. So the results they had, they had over 6,000 followers. Um, they've actually done a really good job of tracking their successes. Uh, one Twitter promotion was equal to 15% of one day's business revenues. And on another day when they were tracking it, um, the sales from people using Twitter as their lead source was 68%. So they asked how to hear about us, and they said Twitter or found you on Twitter. So if you, you know, if you're a small business and you're looking at this, you know, there's a great way to monetize it from seeing how people came to your site. Yes? So what strategies are they using to get followers who are directly interested in their business? They use um, promotions. You know, so today come in, mention Twitter, and you'll get free advertising, things like that. But I mean, how do they get people to follow them to begin with? Um, the same way, you know, we just mentioned. You know, they go and find people that are living in the area around the pizza shop. 
um, follow them, and then they get followed back. And it's the same sort of viral. Uh, so we kind of hire a virtual assistant to go out and do this. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, it's either you know spending money on the direct mail or spend your time. So yeah, yeah. Okay. And here's what their page looks like. It's um, the website's nakedpizza.com. Uh, so now we'll just jump over to to Facebook. Um, there's the, the guy that launched this, and I just read um, last week, he's worth some, it's a B, yeah, two billion dollars, um, so, yeah, two billion. Um, they currently have more than 300 million active users, the average user has 130 friends. How do determine the worth of the Well, in websites, uh, he, that doesn't mean he has a billion dollars. That's the value of his brand if he went on open market. It's what they determine that plus cash assets of the company and anything else that the company has as far as business potential. That's a, it's an assessment. So it's, it's not really it's not really a billionaire. Right. Uh, so it's Kevin Rose sort is, of arbitrary. Yeah. Okay. Like Kevin Rose, they said like four years ago when he met the date was worth sixty million. He but he had to save up money to buy a couch, so he was next to <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have the two billion, yeah. uh, but you know, if he wanted to go and sell the company, there's a good chance he'd get a little more than you know, hundred thousand uh, dollars. So, yeah, you know, they use a complex model for value valuation of companies. Um, you know, three hundred million active users. That's worth. I don't know. That's probably <laughs> a chunk of the two billion. Yeah. What, what did Microsoft pay for one like percent? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Tells you what it's like. Yeah. If you, yeah. Work backwards from that math. Exactly. No, it's not. It's worth. It's worth. Not the five. I mean, I would like to be Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they have 65 million active users who access Facebook through mobile devices. Um, currently, the second most popular site on the internet. Google being number one. And here's some facts about Facebook by uh, gender and age. Um, all the users are, you know, over, like so three quarters of them are over 26, and 48% are 35 and older. So if you compare it to Twitter, they're a little bit older in terms of age, with the majority being 35 and older. What was the percentage of them? What was the percentage? Um, 48%. And in the last 30 days, females age 18 to 25 grew by 700,000. Um, females 45 to 54 grew over 400,000. Um, and you can see pretty much in every category here, except the 35 to 44 age group, Females are responsible for the majority of the growth on Facebook. <coughs> Anyone have any ideas or suppositions as to why that is? Moms. Moms? 35 to 44. Yeah. They don't have time. Was it, was it mostly male before? <coughs> and now that it's kind of coming to the mainstream, perhaps? It's yeah, just it's always skewed this way. It's, 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 it's always been female. Been female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Want to take pictures and talk for women? No, I'm serious. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I'm serious. Like, my sister sends like more tweets than I do, and she's obsessed with taking pictures of my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. joking. No, my husband says the same thing. It's because women are always talking and yeah. showing each other pictures. They're more social. They yeah. Really yeah. Are. yeah. Not bigger corp corpus collection. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was just like, that's true. It's been more um, what do you see here? Yeah, it has a percentage of users, um, 6%, that number of 700,000 translates into 6% of uh, females in the 18 to 25 percent bracket, 18 to 25 age group. So the growth rates for the older people are much higher, is that because so many younger people are on there? I mean, I'm, I know I'm like a dinosaur here, but uh, my daughter spends 
I don't know how many hours a day, all of her friends. I don't know any of my peers were spending much time on it at all. Is that because they're already on it, or I just have weird friends? You know, this is funny, because I, I would assume I'm about in the age group, I would assume I know your age bracket. And just I yeah. find with my women friends, in the past year, almost everybody joined in the past year. And really, I think it's because women really have this desire to keep in touch. And for us, it's, it's been um, sort of a reunion of sorts to get connected with people that we, did, we haven't talked to. But, I spend, but like, if you look on one page view of my daughter, it's like good for 15 minutes of activity. <laughs> so I don't personally, but there are some women that write everything. Is there any data on like time on Facebook by age? There is. Um, Facebook has the, um, the most time on site. With I believe it's it's over 20 minutes per session. But if you look at the demographic, I think like young young females between like 18 or 13 and 28 spend the most time. Okay. Most the okay. most. I'm not wrong. <laughs> post, post the most material. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I can tell you from my household, it's the same thing. I'm a 17 year old. Yeah. Man, but that's where she spends most of my time. My son has a Facebook account. He will post, he will post conversations where my daughter will post pictures and a lot more content oriented than my son is. Mm -hmm. Well, keep in mind, there's two things. Um, the state is skewed because of its growth rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, this is saying like within the past year, you know, if there were nobody in the age group of 55 to 65, and then 10 people joined, it's a 10,000 percent increase in, right. in that age group. Mm -hmm. But and a lot of the kids, like I know, like I've been on Facebook since it was concepted when it was only meant for college students, and you had to have you a have college email. email. It had a BDU mm -hmm. account. Um, so obviously, I'm not in that metric. But the thing I've noticed is that I've had a lot of, like, a lot, I start with a lot of my clientele tends to be middle-aged people, and. What I tend to see is the reason why they're starting to join is their kids are on it, and part of them want to manage what their kids That's do, okay. and part of them want to connect with other ones. So when their kids are always on it, they have that fear factor, especially when you have Dateline NBC talking about to catch a predator every other week. It's, I mean, that's what I've seen. Like, I want to monitor what my kids are doing online, and that's. that's I, think, I think you're right. Yeah, that's what, that's what yeah. my wife and I originally got. But then when you put it down that you went to see your father high school, and all of a sudden you get faith, you get friendly offended by 25 people. That you haven't seen in 30 years. Yeah, they, start, they start using it for something else. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, I started using it for business purposes only, and then it's turned into, you know, personal account, and then, you know, branched off to a fan page, and it's just. And personally, I don't use it for business, particularly for that reason. Yeah, it's yeah. It's hard to separate yeah. once you put your. It's to make a business account now, and then yeah. have a personal Yeah, it's hard to separate it. It's, uh, that's are there any tools for that? I, mean, um, I would never post stuff about you know who I'm um, going out drinking with and who I'm and have trying to decide it. what the next project is. You just make right. two accounts. Yeah, you can make two accounts. Or you could do the privacy settings. You can um, adjust your privacy settings. Like I have all my clients with my Facebook friends on uh, what I call the no access list. So. <laughs> They can't really see, you know, pictures of my daughter's birthday party and things like that. You know, nothing too personal. So, and you can you can go through your Facebook account and check off every single thing that you want people to see. Create a list of Facebook. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah. I need to. You need, you need to do that. My son made the papers two weeks ago because somebody took some of his information off Facebook, found out where he went to high school, sent sent an email. To his high school principal saying he was going to be shooting at the school in his name because they found out where he went to high school on Facebook. Um, we ended up spending half a day with the cops and the FBI. Wow. And you know, they finally determined it wasn't my son, but they then they figured out how they got all his information. So he had an open account? He had an open account. Okay. So I strongly encourage you to you know, find it down what they share. All right. <laughs> Yes. I guess this is a question from a little bit back, but this one businessman told me that he he found someone like a business on Twitter that was very similar to his, mm -hmm. and say they had like ten thousand people. Mm -hmm. Well, he just followed all ten thousand of those people because it was a similar industry okay. and the, the demographics matched up. And typically, on average, thirty three percent of the people will follow you back. So he got like thirty three hundred people to follow him. He was able to specifically market to them. I mean, that's 3,300 people you can market to for free. 
But does that, earlier you said sometimes Twitter might kick you off for doing something like yeah, that? Yeah, it would look like suspicious activity if you go from zero people following to 10,000. So you need to have a progression. Yeah, it has to look like it's something you've done normally, not that you, you know, got a piece of software and did it through. Okay. So. Gotcha. Yeah, but that's an excellent point. That's a good idea in terms of, you know, So that can be a legitimate way to use Twitter as a tool as long as you do it. Everything in moderation. In moderation. What the spammers do is they go around and follow everybody and then they post things. Mm -hmm. go see this movie or whatever. They take all the trending topics and they post right. them all and then have their, their link. So if somebody, if you if you act like what they would do, the heuristics of Twitter say, okay, this person's probably a spammer. Is it based on, do you think they kick you off based on the fact that you're spamming like other users? Like, like for example, what if you got people to follow you that way but you're giving them valuable content, like you're not spamming them? I mean, with that. Yeah, that's, that's a risk you would have to say. I think like yeah. the content is very subjective. Right. right. That's yeah. That's a risk you would have. To the say. answer is yes, but you could you could dispute it at that point. Yeah. Say you know, mm -hmm. hey, you know, take a look. I'm not I'm not trying to sell Viagra. Just I think please. it depends on how many people are reporting you as spam. I think it depends on how many people are reporting you as spam. And yeah, Twitter so. has data on you know what a, what the normal activity looks like. You know, they're not just sitting there uh, <laughs> waiting out of there, yeah, doing whatever. They, they, and, you can have multiple, and you can have multiple Twitter accounts for all your businesses, correct? Mm -hmm. But on Facebook, you can only have one account for yourself, and then you have to have no. pages for your businesses? Is that how You can have pages. I'm, I'm going to get to it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you can open up an actual account solely for your business now, too. So it's all you know, a matter of how you want to manage things. So well, I'll show you. Uh, so yeah, segue right into that. Uh, fan page or a group. Which, which one should you choose? Uh, this is on the assumption that you already have a Facebook account and you know you started a business or have a business and now you want to promote that via your Facebook um, use. So a fan page, good things to know here, they're visible outside of Facebook. So they're indexed in search engines. So for example, if you were to type in um, uh, you know, the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, if they have a fan page, I don't know this, I'm sure, I'm sure they do. Uh, Facebook, you would find their, their page. Um, there's unlimited updates to fans, but you can't email them. Uh, better for long-term relationships with your fans or your readers or your customers. Um, and it does not list the administrator. So it doesn't list the creator of the fan page. That can be important if you want, you know, be anonymous for whatever reason. And I'll show you an example. What did you say about emailing that? On a fan page, you can't send out mass email. You can send updates. On a group, you can email out to 5,000 people. So if you're creating your fan page, you go to here. There's a bunch of categories you can select from. You know, is it a, is it a other business, local? Is it a brand or an organization? Are you a band or a public figure? And then here's where you name your business. Um, a, a nice hint here would be to use uh, some keywords that people might use to search for you online. Um, it's pretty simple. So if you have like a website that you know, offers, let's say, games or whatever, but you just put the web URL as the name of this fan page, and the reason for doing it is just that people will find you at Facebook as opposed to having like a does that a URL of your site or something? Does that URL have a significant amount of brand and name? Yeah, code? let's say it does. Yeah, that would be it. That's one option. It's not going to come through as like you know the specific URL, but you could choose to do that. Can I ask a question? When you create a fan page, does that also contribute? To the quality of your um, your search ranking with Google, you know, or with search engines, it's separate. It's separate. So you mean the quality of ranking for your website itself? Yeah. Yeah, it's separate. It's it doesn't it deter. It doesn't take away from. No, it. and you know it could minister help it. If yeah. Some links okay. pointing because down. it could end up. Yeah. I said yeah. But you know, don't create a page and think you're going to be on the top of Google because no. of that. Right. 
Um, so a group page, it's um, now open groups are indexed in search engines, and I did not know that until the G20 happened. Um, I was doing some research, and there was a G20, I typed in G20, G20 and Facebook, and a group came up. So it was very strange. Um, now they allow you, if you create a group, you're allowed to send up to 5,000 emails to your members. And the difference there is that it comes in to Facebook has an actual email in the inbox, whereas with a fan page, it would come up as like an update notification. Uh, they're great for hosting uh, some active discussions and getting quick attention and hosting events. And they list the administrator's names. So anything that your group does can be tied back to you. So if you are you know, a member, or if you created this and it's a controversial group, and you don't necessarily want to, you know, to be affiliated with it, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know if you, you know, you work for a, a school such as this, but uh, you create a, a hate, a hate art institute website or group, you probably don't want to do it on a group. You want to do it on a fan page. Now, how do group and fan pages work with an existing business website? I'm sorry. If you have your business has a website, a main website, mm -hmm. how do these um, other pages work with that existing website? Is they are they separate or are they can they can be Um, they're separate. This would all be within the Facebook uh, realm, but you could point your fan page or your group page back to your um, your web page, your website, so it can um, complement and increase exposure. In my mind, you're reaching a totally different audience, and that's how I tried to present it to my boss when he was like, why would you even want the people who are on Facebook? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like my paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Because we want scientists to use our machines. Right. I right. Mean, most of them are on Facebook now. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at the age and the graphics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at the age and the income demographics, and you can build a good case for using it. At National power. Science, the National Supercomputing Association, does it? Mm -hmm. well, I can't read it. Um, April, could you sure. my page maybe um, about a year or so ago? Now, how do I tell just from looking at the page whether it's a fan page or a group page? Is that you have maybe it up? A, yeah. I mean, is that a. You have a personal question? But you can, so create, you can create a group page. Like, I'm in charge of a group called the Elizabeth Group, and it's just. So I'd have to create, create another page? Yeah, this is your first one. Okay, so is that new? Like, fan and group? Um, I'll show examples okay. of a fan page and group page. So you, yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so when you create your group, um, probably the main thing that's very important is here with the network once you select that you can't go back on that so if you select pittsburgh and then you decide you're going to go national we have a problem um, found out the hard way on that um, so selecting your group name you know you want to do your business name or some words keywords that are related so when people are actually using Facebook has a search engine, you know, there's a little search box there, you know, if you're looking for Pittsburgh hairdressers or whatever, you want to come up for that term. So try to incorporate what your business does into your name. Um, description, you know, oftentimes you take that right from your website if it's good, you know, you can just put it right in there. Um, and everything else is pretty self-explanatory. And you create, and then you have a page. Now this is just a, a breakdown list of what's different with a Facebook page versus a Facebook group. Uh, the main the main things are with the page, the admins are shown or not shown. I'm sorry. Um, and you can host extra <coughs> applications on the fan page, but not the group. And then there's there's limits to the amount of uh, emails you can send on the group. And you can you don't have as much control over the privacy on the page as you do on a group. You can close a group and have it be invitation only, where a fan page you can't shut anyone out from looking at the fan page. Yeah, you have a question? From a marketing standpoint, is this an either or, or can you use these together? You can use them together. Um, it all depends on you know how much time you have and you know what your goals are. 
I mean, I, I work with a small newspaper, and we recently started a fan page as a way to just kind of get our stories through another channel for mm -hmm. readers. But it does feel limited. And so I'm wondering if there's a way to use this group, you know, in addition to that, and yeah. have them link up together. I mean, both seem like they're coming from the same organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you do a fan page, and I jo let's say when I join the fan page, there's a little notification that comes up and says Rebecca just joined, or is a fan of blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen with the group though. It just simply says Rebecca joined the group so in the status, but it doesn't come up as the sidebar, right? Is that it depends on how your settings are. Oh, like you, you yeah. set that up. You can choose because I haven't set up a fan page. But okay. Yeah, like in, in with my friends, I don't have anyone. No one can see like when I. You know, you know, write on someone's wall or do certain things. I have different privacy that we to check. So, oh, I see. You're saying you person. Okay. Yeah. I have a question about the fan page. Um, can you actually go and seek out people, or do they have to come by you? You can seek out people if it's connected to your um, personal account. You can say, you know, fan my page. But they would have to be on my personal and say, yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if there's another way to do that. Does anyone else know? Huh? That's really annoying. Oh, I wish you could do it. So, so you, you can send you can send a link to your fan page to yeah, you know mass email to people that you're not necessarily friends with. That's another way. So are you saying that they have to be a friend on your personal page to be also be on your fan page, or can they be on the fan page? They don't have to be your friend. They don't have to be your friend. Um, but that's a quick and easy way to get someone to be your fan. If they're already friends, you can send out a notice to be on your page. Um, so if we just break it down, uh, groups are great for organizing on a personal level and for smaller scale interactions around a cause or an event. Um, pages are more long term and they're better for brand building and for people that want to interact more with their customers. And uh, if you think you're, you know, you're like a movie star or something and you need more than uh, 5,000 people on your, your fan page. So. Those are the two uh, main differences, I think. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, is there any reporting or analytics um, available for pages so that you can see, you know, demographics for who's yes. following you? And yes. Like yes. I didn't include that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's called Insights in Facebook, and it allows you to see who. Once you reach up to ten or twenty fans, you get to see demographic data for the people that are fans of your page. Okay. It breaks it down by age and um, gender. Sorry. Insight. Okay, so is this a group page or a fan page? It's a fan page because you can't see who started it. No, it's a group page. It's a group, it's a group it's a page. It says promote group with add, edit group, create group event, leave group, group type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, group I mean, it. somebody is a fan and made a group page or something. There you go. Good All right, see you guys. <laughs> yeah. So this this is the group page for um, a nonprofit I work with, and this is the fan page. So, yeah, I've gone first glance. You know, it's not very clear. You know, which is which. Um, but when you start to look more closely, you can you know pretty much tell. Fan pages look more like your personal page, you know, with the wall, the info, the photos, etc. And group pages don't. Uh, so now a Facebook case study on a fan page, a good one to look at is Coca-Cola. Um, it was created by two fans and not by, you know, the brand empire known as Coke. Cola. Um, so Coke found it on Facebook, and you know, right away you always hear these big corporations taking over something like this, you know, just wanting to buy them out or cease and desist the thing, because uh, you know they didn't create it and they don't have any control over the message. Uh, but Coke took a different approach with them, and they worked with the creators, they kind of wine and dine them, and you know. I don't really know. I don't know if there was any money financial exchange. Um, Coke didn't try to take over the page, 
And they empowered and encouraged the creators to make a video about creating a Coke fan page and going to Coke's uh, headquarters and learning about you know, the whole process of making Coke. The drink. First one, go to Colombia. Yeah. 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 That's true. But uh, what, there was cocaine in Coke at one point, right? Yes. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. original. Technically, yeah. Yeah. they don't let us see recipe. Right. Technically, they don't. It's no yeah. secret. Right. Everyone like does. Guys. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, really? yeah, really. Trace amount or something? Yeah, trace amount. It's not enough that they have to That's why I can cause some heart damage. One of the many reasons why. It's actually pulled. There must have been a lot of research and development. Yes. So there's close to 4 million fans of the Coke page, you know, 3,740, blah, blah, blah. It's the largest product fan page on Facebook. And it reinforces brand loyalty and positive perception of the product because it's still you know, maintained by two bands and not the corporation. <laughs> yep, question. Coke wouldn't be like a jerk about it. They have sued them for copyright infringement? Nope. Oh, yeah. They probably could have they could it shut it down. down. Yeah, see, so this is. It would have been bad PR. Or... Exactly, exactly. So they were smart about it. What's your product if you shut us down? Yeah, exactly. It would be like horrible. You go from fans to. Yeah. Oh, wasn't there an attorney in here? Yeah. Okay. This th is this in your realm of practice? It's just not in my realm. Okay. <laughs> I, don't think they, I don't think they should shut it down, though. Um, no, but they got out. It's fair it. comment on a product. They got out the lawyer. But what if they had a logo and stuff? Yeah, if they were misusing the logo or abusing it. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. trademark and mm -hmm. sell it to someone. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, here is a link to the there video is. that they created. I think it's worth watching. That's just me. We got millions of dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should just reenact what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll take, I'll take the bank piece here. Oh, so this is how okay. you install Debbie Flash. This is the backbone. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Dusty Michael. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. And to celebrate your success on Facebook, your future together, we plan a very exciting few days. Your itinerary is quite excelsior. For three days, Coca Cola treated us like kings. We went on a VIP tour of the Coca Cola Museum. We saw the Coca Cola archives where every Coca Cola product ever is housed. That there is the original art from Swell. The last day we had a very important meeting to discuss the future of the band age. Yeah, we'll more Russell Jenner, a moving picture, a toddler, yes, it's a top little baby fat man to the Billy Go to the right. Uh, your target audience. Um, doesn't do any good to be marketing on Twitter if you're, you got some, uh, you know, senior citizen product. Um, increase online exposure uh, with social networks. Doing it takes time and dedication. There's no uh, quick workarounds for it. You know, you can't just automate this stuff. Um, well, you can, but not, not, not a good thing to do. Um, and work with and engage your customers. Those are three things I'd like to leave you guys with. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have a quick question about engaging your customers. You also want them to be engaged with each other, possibly. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're Twittering from your company's account, should you put like a little hash mark thingy in there so that they can always find stuff about your company? Is you can you do that. that or not? You can do that. And those things you just create them randomly. It's not like a collection of unique identifiers that Twitter is maintaining or anything. You just pick one. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. And hope for the best. Mm -hmm. No one else does it. Well, there is a place where you can always look up for one. Yes, yeah, but, that, but that's it. That's as far as it goes. You could choose someone else if you wanted to. Sorry. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.